In this video, I will be reviewing the epidemiology of COVID-19, how this virus spreads. And this infection is primarily spread by respiratory secretions. Close contacts can inhale droplets associated with coughing, or the droplets can land on surfaces where they can survive for hours up to three days. Droplets usually cannot project beyond two meters or six feet. The contribution of asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic patients is under investigation. We should point out there are several reports of super spreaders. One of the most notorious examples is case 31 from South Korea. This 35-year-old Chinese woman traveled from Wuhan, China to Daegu, South Korea, where she visited a megachurch twice, as well as a hospital, and while Febril ate at a buffet before she was diagnosed. Tracing determined that she had come in contact with 1,160 people. The virus can also be found in stool, but it is difficult to culture, and no cases of transmission by this route have been reported. To date, perinatal transmission has not been observed. Tracing studies reveal that an infected host only infect 2 to 2.5 others. This number is termed R sub zero, and this virus is one of the most highly infectious agents. However, measles with an R sub zero of 10 is more infectious. The majority of cases are acquired by close contact with a symptomatic person. 1 to 5% of close contacts develop the disease. 80 to 85% of infections are contracted within the family, called family clusters. Other settings have included the megachurch in South Korea with over 1,200 cases, cruise ships, sporting events, and an entire Italian community. In the early phase of the epidemic in both China and Italy, a large portion of nosocomial transmissions occurred through contacts between clinicians and visitors with no or mild symptoms of COVID-19. Healthcare givers must beware and remember Dr. Sisi. I will be discussing how caregivers can protect themselves in the fourth video. When it comes to who is infected, this virus is an equal opportunity promoter. Everyone appears to be equally susceptible. Every age, including young children who may have mild symptoms and be interpreted as having another febrile illness, males and females are infected with nearly the same frequency. Our understanding of how the virus infects humans described in the first video is supported by the studies of viral counts in the nasopharynx and throat over time. Soon after being infected, before symptoms as well as during the first 24 or 48 hours of symptoms, the counts are very high and patients are most infectious at those times. Some individuals shed virus for over two weeks. The outbreak began as a point source in the Hunan live animal fish market, and the majority of cases were among market workers. However, within 10 days, the disease rapidly spread person to person to those who had not been in the market, demonstrating early on that this virus was very infectious. These maps document the rapid spread throughout China. Each 10-day each interval documents spread outward from the city of Wuhan, where the market was located, into the entire Hubei province and progressively into other eastern provinces and subsequently quickly spread throughout the world. Here are the epidemic curves for Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan, and the European countries, including Italy and the United States. Note the flat curve for Singapore, where rapid testing, contact tracing, and isolation and quarantines were instituted. Note the steep curve for the U.S. and the large number of cases now in Italy. Here is a U.S. map created by the Center for System Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins. The size of the circle correlates with the number of cases. 
As of March 14th, Washington State had the most cases at 568. New York was second with 421, California third with 272, Massachusetts 123, and Florida 106. Because I work in Florida, I have closely followed the outbreak here. As you can see, cases are showing up every, everywhere in Florida, concentrating in the southeast region in Fort Lauderdale area and the Miami area. The epidemic curve on the right is obeying an exponential curve fit that shows that infected cases are doubling every 1.8 days. As of February 25th, the cases outside China have exceeded those within China. To summarize the content of this video, transmission of the virus is by droplets and fomites. There is rapid spread person to person, predominantly in families, and less commonly spread in large gatherings or on cruise ships. The R sub zero is two to 2.5. The epidemic began as a point source outbreak in a live animal fish market in Hunan, China. As of early March, the cases have rapidly increased and now exceed 110,000 worldwide. Many countries are now experiencing an exponential epidemic curve. Testing, case finding, and isolation are failing in most of our healthcare systems with the exceptions of China, Singapore, Hong Kong, and South Korea.